Hello and welcome to another episode of Standing Stanley Tucci. I'm David. And I'm Hannah. And uh, we are big Stan heads. If you're just joining us for the first time, uh, we are going through every single Stanley Tucci credit on IMDb and watching it and telling you about it and how much we <laughs> love Stanley. So today we're talking about a CBS crime drama called Wise Guy. Uh, it's It was like one of the first real like serialized soap opera style crime dramas. And it was about a bunch of uh, federal agents infiltrating crime in New York City. Yeah. Uh, totally fictional uh, FBI department that doesn't exist. But yeah. hey, whatever, uh, whatever gets you a couple seasons gets you four seasons. Sure, why not? <laughs> uh, yeah, this show was oddly more compelling than I thought it would be, especially for a crime drama from the late 80s. <laughs> so so this uh, TV series cameo is, is uh, you know, f- a couple of firsts for Tucci. You know, this is his longest, um, his, his longest uh, TV series run. You know, this is much longer than his two episode run on Miami Vice. Yeah, um, and this is his real, his first recurring role and yeah. as a recurring villain. And it's, yeah. it's happening as the result of this show is weird and different and unique. It was, you know, soap opera style. So it, it had arcs, you know, it's like an anime in that way. It's, <laughs> you, you come in for it. Oh, it's, this is the garment, the garment district storyline. Right, um, right. And, and they introduce entirely new characters specifically for that arc. And then they have their own little stories and then that ends and then you move on to the next caper. And so that gave an opportunity for, you know, a character actor like uh, like Tucci to really shine and make an impact and and have, you know, more than one episode to have the spotlight, basically. <laughs> right, right. You know, and uh, this is this is another series that ends poorly for his character, uh, right. unfortunately. You know, he, they got to get him in the end. Yeah, Italian get crime him. boss. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Is, he is almost this is, didn't. He almost got away this time. He did almost get away. Did I? I forget if he uh, died in Miami Vice or not, or if they just arrested. He died him. in Miami Vice yeah, in the okay. second episode that he he appears in. Okay. Um. Again, we have you know he has a a, a love scene, a love making scene. He does. Ooh. He's got scenes of him brutally murdering people and him being brutally murdered. Uh, we've got scenes of him just in his office confronting a policeman directly going you got nothing on me uh, <laughs> you got you got nothing uh what is his I name mean, Mc, Mc, mcfly uh, no, that's not <laughs> mcgreedy or something like that mccreary mctyke the uh Pike. <laughs> the old he's the patty all right but mcpike is uh played by our this week's dun, 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 dun. Whomst we also, the one, the right. only, Jonathan Banks. Whomst we also stand, absolutely. Um, we also we, we stand. love him in Breaking Bad. We love him in Better Call Saul. And we love him in NBC's Community, his, yeah. uh, one of his only comedic roles. And you wouldn't think of him as a real comedic actor, especially watching this show where he is completely dead face, deadpan the whole time. I'm going to get you, Penzolo. <laughs> Um, and that's his whole character. And you can really picture him as like the cop who would eventually retire and become uh, uh, Professor Hickey in MBC. Yeah. Oh, 100%. The who, right. The guy who's always threatening to punch people in the heart. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. It's it's great. He makes an incredible straight man uh, in in comedy, um, and then I think you know just the fact that if, if you take a character like this, who you know is amped up to eleven on just like cop stereotypes, and put him yeah. in any other setting, it's it's automatically hilarious, you know. Right. Um, so so yeah, shout out to to Jonathan Banks who who plays sort of the. Uh, behind the desk captain who's sort of orchestrating the uh, organized crime bureau um, right. and, and, and that's his role in all of this yeah and, and i mean like i think it's pretty amazing that tucci does stand out even amongst like a oh, really yeah. interesting and like fleshed out cast uh, yeah just in our guest cast for this just this cycle i mean you know jonathan banks is in the whole show 
But just for this cycle, we have Jerry Lewis uh, yeah. as the the patriarch of this Jewish uh, Jewish garment family, you know, garment business family selling yeah. selling fabrics and dresses, and uh, you know he gets embroiled in this whole uh, this whole mob scene on Seventh <laughs> Avenue in New York because uh, he just he's I mean, too focused on business. Right, and I mean Jerry Lewis say what you will about him but i mean he gives a phenomenal performance in this yeah. uh in this show um yeah as just the 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 dad that everyone hopes not to have <laughs> oh yeah you know like can't can't even take three seconds to say good job i'm glad you're alive son after he's scared his son dies in a bombing right. you know has to so, really yeah, go so his character's name is uh eli sternberg so you know yeah. jewy jewerson and then his <laughs> son is uh, equally as Jerry Jewerson, David Sternberg. Yeah. And he's played by uh, the incomparable Ron Silver. Yeah. Who uh, you may know from The West Wing. He is a recurring role in The West Wing. Uh, he's also uh, in the pilot for Heat Vision and Jack as himself, um, which is which is kind of cool. I don't, I don't think I remembered that one. <laughs> um. And then uh, the the usual guy who who plays like the the undercover cop, uh, play, he plays Terra Nova. He actually got injured on set, and so they had to boot him out in the second episode of the of the arc. He also gets injured on set later and like breaks his neck. Uh, oh my like, god! Much la- like a season later or something. He did not have a lot of luck on this show, and it's no wonder he quit. Uh, yeah. And, and the show was canceled soon after, but. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, who, he's replaced just for this? these four episodes with uh, Anthony Dennison as uh, uh, Detective John Henry Raglan, and you yeah. may recognize Anthony Dennison, Hannah. Do, can you can you remember where he's from? No, but I know he's from we watched something. It. We, we watched, watched it for it? this show. Is it? Uh... Is it Kojak? No, not Kojak. Uh, Monkey Shines. Is he a Monkey Shines? Is he the guy in Monkey no, Shines? No, he is not. Fuck, he is in he? Crime Story. He's the crime boss of that show, Ray Luca. Oh! oh. <laughs> it all comes around. Hey, so Tucci. you've literally got the crime boss from a show that Stanley Tucci was on coming on to play an undercover, uh, you know, undercover cop to take down him as the crime boss. So oh, how the tables have turned. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's moving up a rung in the uh, the movie ladder. <laughs> All right. Um, so yeah, I think we, we've kind of slightly alluded to the plot, but let's sort of dive right in. How yeah. how does this this series begin? This this cycle. Oh my god. It basically begins with like the Star Wars opening crawl where it's like the Garmin District, <laughs> you know, like to the prequels, where it's just a lot of really not that interesting business about we've got production deadlines to meet and we can't do it. Ah, dad, I don't know. Like, we're gonna do it. Ah, and it's, right. well, it's a lot of establishing the, the world top. and you know, because they yeah. got to establish this whole setting. But yeah, yeah, it's it's uh it's Jerry Lewis is talking to his son, being like, okay, our our shipments they've been going missing, you know, and like they're they've been delayed and they're stuck on boats. Oh uh, like, yeah, nothing's moving, and we can't get our trucks, and and we've got this order to meet. So then they go to this guy named uh, J- Jimmy Coke Bottles, which yeah. is such a great uh, stereotypical Jewish shyster Shylock name. Um, yeah, and he, and he's got you know Coke bottle glasses. And uh, he's got a taser and a baseball bat, <laughs> and, and it works. Bat. <laughs> gotta... And uh, and so they go to him for the money, and he's like, "I can't give you the money." And so then uh, Eli's like, "All right, I'm gonna go. I know you you think he's a bad guy, but I worked with his father for many years re- renting his trucks. I'm gonna go to this guy for money." And and Ron Silver, David Sternberg, is like, "No, you, you can't go to him. He's in the mob. He's dirty. I've known him for years." Daddy's bad news. We don't right, need but him. Then, but then they go, and he gets the money from him. And oh no, now he's in with the mob. And the mob the mob is trying to take over the whole 7th Avenue garment, garment district. It's He's going to take over the whole thing. And so David Sternberg, he's 
He's at the end of his rope. He has nothing he can do. He's at a loss. And that's when he thinks, I'm going to go to the cops. And I'm going to get a man on the inside. And so he, he goes and, I, I don't know, they have a wiretapped room with like a lawyer or something. But they the get him. Goes. And they say, all right, we're sending in Terra Nova. You're in. And then, uh, and then he comes into work as a what is he what is his job it's like a security specialist quote right unquote. a security specialist you know the guy you hire to go and make sure things go smoothly he works with the mob he gets dirty you hire an ex-con for this kind of job right right and at first you know the dad eli is like what are you doing this is for cock the nonsense get him out of here blah and he's like i make a muscle you can't even do anything blah and he's like, you want to be helpful? You get my stuff off that boat. So, you know, he does because he's working right. with the federal government. <laughs> right. Well, no, that's not how he does it, though. He does it by going to uh, to Pinzolo, played by the incomparable Stanley Tucci. Well, Pinzolo pays him a visit. He finds out right. that he's He there. finds out. He, so he, right. So first he goes to Jimmy Coke Bottles and he says, all right, Jimmy Coke Bottles, you're going to give me that money. So that they uh, so that they can get the boats out of the place, and then Jimmy Cookbottles is like, "You come to me without asking my boss Pinzolo first? And then he jabs him with a taser and starts beating him, and then he gets injured, which is good because the actor was already injured. <laughs> so, <laughs> so but it's how- really. It's really like the saddest scene though. This like dumpy little dude just like tasing and smacking this guy with a bat once. And he's like, ah, no, I'm out of okay, commission. Well, no, you you try getting tased. Tasing is no laughing matter. Okay. Tasing is not, tasing is not fun. I know, I, I'm not saying, but I'm It sounds like you're saying just, he's he went down like a bitch, but I don't think- I am saying I don't think he, he went down like a bitch, down. but the reason I'm down. saying that is because if that was like today, like 2020 crime show, he wouldn't have gone down. He'd have punched. Oh, well, see, he'd that would just be unrealistic. You know, uh-huh. this show gets the realism really right and yeah. the racism. Mwah. Um, so much <laughs> well, I mean, I guess in some ways it's like not like the worst thing because it's mostly the cops who are being racist, which which fits. It fits. Yeah, but it's also it, just everyone like the the Jews are like racist to each other. <laughs> and right, like, right. But I mean, like, I, like to the wealthy Italians. like Manhattan Jews. I mean, they can also be a little bit, you know. A little I know bit they're racist. racist. Yes, I'm not. I'm not. I'm just saying everyone right. is racist. I'm just saying like the racism. It's like there's a realism to it on some level where everyone is just calling each other by like. Slurs, slurs constantly yeah and uh and everyone's just assuming like oh yeah he's the jew and he's the italian like that's what they're that's what they're gonna do they're gonna be in the mob whatever yeah <laughs> um <sighs> anyway so he, he he's he's walking around on crutches for the rest of the episode because he got tased and beaten with a baseball bat and that's when stanley tucci makes a house call and he gives him a pager yes this is how crime was done it's very like season one, The Wire, you know? Right. Well, <laughs> uh, so then basically he says, all right, you work for, you work for this Sternberg guy. That means actually you work for me. Cause I can, I work, everyone in this district actually works for me. And then being an undercover copy, of course says, yes. All right. Thank you very much, sir. I'll do whatever you want. And all right. Like, all right. I'm gonna let these. I'm gonna let the, uh, the the dresses get off the boat now. And now he can make his delivery or what? No, no. He didn't want the dresses to get off the boat. He lit the the federal agent um, Terranova. He he gets it off because of his like connections and like pay they so they can pay the money back to to Tucci's character oh. and then he's mad about that and he's like you don't do anything without me without running it by me first okay and he's like oh sorry I thought I was doing you a favor you know yeah. but really he's playing both sides right should, should we talk about the the Tucci performance you know how does this compare to oh. like um uh, what, who is what was his, uh, Frank Mosca, the other crime boss yeah. from Miami Vice? How does this compare uh, in terms of the performance? 
I'd say they're similar, you know? Right. I mean, they're definitely still both Tucci. They have that kind of intellectual sort of flamboyantness, the, yeah. the metrosexual kind of undertones. Those are all still there. Well, and also um, Tucci is just very good at at playing uh, sort of understated characters. You know, like he doesn't need to do sort of big gesticulations or large like facial reactions to things. Like he can just with like the twitch of an eyebrow, you're like, oh, I know what this guy's about. You know, like but he's he, fun. He, 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 you like you sympathize oh, yeah. with him almost immediately. Like you're he's like, got this guy couldn't hurt a fly. I love him. Well, because he has an ease. He's, I think he's got an ease yeah. on camera and he's got an ease within, like he inhabits the character, you know? Right. It's like, you believe that we did just kind of walk in on this guy going about his day being a crime boss. Like, yeah, yeah, now I'm going over here and I'm juicing my carrots or all right, I'm shuffling some papers and uh, leaning on my desk casually. Like he's right. got a, a very uh, easy physicality to him. Yeah. And, and I mean, like, keep in mind that this is his, what, like, fifth uh, uh, role a in a mafia in a, as a mobster. Um, yeah. And he's sick of it by this point. You know he is. Oh, I'm sure. But he, you know, he's a pro. He's not going to let that slip. You know, so he was in, in Pritzi's honor. He was a, a he was in the mob. Crime story, he was in the mob. Uh, Kojak, I don't think he is. But who's that girl? He's a dock worker. And then... Miami Vice mob, Monkey well, Shines. He's a doctor, so that's <laughs> doctor. that's good. Equalizer, not, not in the mob, but he's a criminal uh, <laughs> assemblyman running for well, right. And it, it and in Monkey Shines, he's a slimy doctor who who steals the girlfriend. You know, so he's that's still true. he's still very generally a villain. The only non-villain right. has been his Slaves of New York uh, cameo, where oh, no, no, also uh, also the street where he's a cop. But uh, That's I guess true. you could argue that, that the cops are really the villains of that show. <laughs> um, but There's nothing happening in that show. It's just <laughs> people sitting in a basement being recorded on a VHS. <laughs> right. Like, but, that's yeah. it. So he's not the villain of that show. But, no. uh, you know, now we're at Wise Guy. You know, he's been doing this now for, you know, just a few years. And he's he's gotten, like, five or six mobster roles he's 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 a traitor to his to his ethnicity to to all of his his parents and all of his fellow italians but he's he's getting work and he's, he's getting work making a fucking meal out of it he is <laughs> he really is you know and, and uh, it's speaking true of Every meals time... <laughs> one of the defining features of this particular mob boss is that he uh, he doesn't eat lunch. Yeah, he he like juices things. He just loves his juicer and they keep he's showing got, it in like every episode. He's got an electric juicer because Anna, you must understand this is a metaphor. This is high level oh. symbolic storytelling. He's yeah. Putting the squeeze on his underlings and on the, the oh. other businesses. He's putting okay. the squeeze on them. So it's a power move when he's going around and like he's got clients in there or he's got he's got you know jerry lewis in there and he puts a bunch of vegetables and a little thing and goes and then takes a cup and just starts drinking it yeah <laughs> yeah and uh and it's in like many many shots this juicer so many it's it's the very if you're watching our video podcast you can see it uh behind david the beautiful <laughs> juicer in question <laughs> Um, but I think it's a great like character choice. I mean, it's not his choice. I'm guessing. I, I'm, I'm guessing it was in the script because yeah. somebody went and got a juicer. <laughs> yeah. You don't usually do that because the actor says they want it. But no. I mean, he feels right at home making that juice. I bet, totally. bet he does juice. I bet he likes the juice. Uh, the tooch. The tooch loves the juice. Tooch I would bet. Um. <laughs> Yeah, so this this sort of uh, series, this little arc of Wise Guy, is is very much a family drama because you know right. at first we think it's just Stanley Tucci who's trying to drive the business into the ground, but then we find out that uh, David's cousin, uh, 
what's her name? His his cousin, who's like also weirdly attracted to him, is yeah. Carol Goldman, played by Patricia Charbonneau. They're like and, second uh, cousins or something, but it's still weird. I don't think they are second cousins. No, because I think their dads are also cousins. They're first cousins? Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, the point being, uh, she is, like, clearly very uh, interested in Ron Silver's uh, David Sternberg. I mean, he's uh, also very clearly interested in her, too. Right. It's reciprocal, in fact. But you know, that's I guess that's a stereotype about Jews as well. I don't I don't they know. They all marry their cousins? No, thank you. <laughs> no offense, but no thank you. <laughs> Terrible. Uh the the show the show continues, they're introducing all these characters, but the real drama is between Jerry Lewis and Ron Silver. That because is Jerry true. Lewis is this, you know, overly critical business owning father who is also like he was a bad dad in childhood because he like you know, divorced uh, his mom as soon as he made it rich and married some shiksa. Uh, ah. <laughs> ain't, ain't that like a Jew? And uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is this is another one though that we could definitely classify into like ah New York. You know, right. like it's just it's Manhattan, so New York. Manhattan Jewish families, the old the old guard of people who grew up. And I mean, started he made with just. Just a very small business and then grew it into something huge. They made it in the big city. He made it out of Flatbush and now he's out in Scarsdale. <laughs> the true success story. <laughs> I can't. Uh, meanwhile, there's now like million dollar lofts being made in Flatbush, but what can you do? Um <laughs> Right. But the, the but then, you know, like in the second episode, it's like David Sternberg's like out in some other country making like a deal or something. And then he goes yeah. like radio silent and then there's like a bombing near his hotel. And it's then, like in his hotel, but. Right. And then and then Jerry Lewis is like, oh, my God, he could be dead. He could be dead. And I never got to tell him that I loved him and that I thought he was a great businessman. And I was only hard on him because he wanted him to be better than me at the job. And then he gets back and he's like, wait, so you closed the deal at uh, 75 cents on the dollar? Uh, this, this is terrible. I thought I told you, don't go higher than 70. Never go higher than 70. So he, You he should have stayed it. there. Meanwhile, he's like, oh, don't worry, dad. I got out of there before the bomb went off because I already closed the deal. So it's fine. And, you know, his dad's just like, no, you should have go back. <laughs> <laughs> Right. And um. It's 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 also very interesting because the the series tries to tackle sort of some of the labor issues around this, you know, like the right. the sweatshops and whatnot. Um, and so we get a lot of like yelling about communism in the middle of it. Um, right. Where... It's it's really it's really like hilariously like on the nose and not subtle because no. it's like by this point they brought in Anthony Dennison as 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 Raglan to come be yeah. the replacement. And his whole story is that he's got a wife and kid at home where, you know, Terra Nova, he's like a lone wolf kind of guy. Yeah. He's on the edge. And this guy's like, you know, I'm just trying to make it back to my kid. You know, right. I'm not and invested he, and in he's, this. he's back in for one more job, you know, right, like his, last his last field assignment was bad. Right. His last job went, went, went down wrong and a bunch of people got killed because of him. He got and the done. guys got away. And the guys got away. And, and so he's got like trauma because of this. Anyway, the whole point is he like goes in to, cause he's the security guy. So he's there to literally like break up and like break the picket line and, right. you know, uh, uh, destabilize the, destabilize the strike. Um, and so he goes and immediately seduces the female leader of the strike. Uh, <laughs> it's really awkward. It's terrible. It's very awkward. It's very strange. There's like this bizarre erotic like shaving scene that happens before they have sex and I, <laughs> right, I don't yeah. understand why I guess it she, exists. She grew up in I think she grew up in Beijing and she learned to shave people there. <laughs> I guess. I don't, I don't know. know. Fucking weird. 
Um, uh, she, but you know, and he's like, by, uh, she played. She's played by Joan Chen, who you might know from uh, from Twin Peaks. She was in that at some point, and then uh, she was also in that movie, The Last Emperor. Uh, so you know, she's she was like, I don't know, like kind of a name, but but just sort of brought in to be the conquest of this philandering cop on the edge. Right. Well, and also to you know. <laughs> make him him you know he's the good guy right so right. he sympathizes with these poor workers who are being exploited but you know you're not right. going to change anything by like picketing and like they talk about the whole triangle shirtwaist factory like there weren't like massive strikes and riots after that do they you know, mention that, the do they mention that by name that specific yes yeah they talk about the triangle shirtwaist like disaster because i know they were talking, talking about because there was other fires like literally pinzola was having people go around setting fires in like other places around uh to try and make it so that you know he could only have dresses made at this place uh, right in chinatown right uh, <laughs> and and to sort of just like mess with other competition and whatnot um but it turns out that (laughs) just like no they they do talk about the triangle shirtwaist uh fire disaster which killed like a hundred 170 people something like that uh 170 workers and like honestly is what we owe a ton of modern um factory reform to (laughs) is that disaster in 1911 um but you know they're all like oh it was so great that that happened in the past but these right. these crazy radicals like who who just want something for free what you, you just think yelling about it's gonna do something there's systems you gotta work with the system kid right. meanwhile you gotta this negotiate cop then, you gotta come to the table but you then meanwhile because... <laughs> meanwhile this cop at the end of all this commits an extrajudicial murder so like whatever man you know <laughs> right but i think it was uh it wasn't it wasn't him who murders the other guy in the strike right it was one of pinzolo's other guys kills him yes yes yeah i mean i'm not he definitely does commit an extrajudicial murder later but <laughs> in between there's uh somebody kills one of the members of the strike and that's how the strike ends because uh you know it's, it's spooks like, her. You want it's her roommate it spooks her roommate right so you know it's like yeah, you don't kill the leader of the of the strike because that makes a martyr. You kill one of the lowers, and then that makes the leader scared, and then they and then they quit. And that's actually probably real strategy for <laughs> yeah. mobs, uh, businesses, cops, lots of people. Yeah, anyone you never kill the leader. Your leaders make martyrs, fellas. <laughs> Remember that. <laughs> um. <laughs> so then, uh, what you call it? So, you know, there's like a strange scene where she goes back to the workers who are all like, thank you for testifying. And, and I know that reform will happen soon. You, you worked hard. Thank you. You know, and they all give her like pity claps. And she's like, I did do the right thing. Thank you. You know, and it's, it's just such, uh, you know, American government propaganda. Right. I mean, uh, we're just, we're just, we're just running a, uh, a sweat, a sweat shop. shop. It's just an American sweatshop. Jesus Christ, you're really gonna complain about that. Right. But they get the dresses out on time. They Everything do. seems to be going well. But then dun, dun, dun. as it turns out, they had they in the the factory where they made the initial fabrics, they purposefully didn't apply the flame retardant. So the dresses are now flame protardant. Flame <laughs> right incredibly tardant. flammable <laughs> they're tardant as heck uh, yeah. to the point where like just putting the dress on like a normal rack will cause it to explode and kill you <laughs> was was that what happened i thought I, someone it's, it was i mean like it that's what it looked like in the shot like it just ignited yeah. by putting it on <laughs> on a, a what do you call it a dummy yeah mannequin <laughs> I call them dummies. All right. <laughs> a more pejorative 
word for mannequin. Yeah. So then we find out what the big master scheme is, is that uh, the the cousin character whose name, is, is it Elaine? Is it really I, Elaine? I, it's not Elaine. I told you it already. Elaine. It's Carol Goldman. Carol. By oh, Patricia God. Charbonneau. Carol Goldman. Uh, Carol, you know, his uh, the first female uh, partner at her Wall Street firm. And she's what a, she's, she's going to do is some... Jew. She's a Wall Street Jewish American princess. You know, she's, she's nobody. <laughs> she's going to do some... She thinks that she's somebody. She's absolutely nobody. And, she uh, thinks and... she's going to do some insider training to to get some revenge for her father who used to run the business. But it turns out... Eli's Eli stole it from him except actually right. the dad like gave it to him a million years ago and so right. they're they're trying really to like no make conflict. this as tragic as possible yeah so they're 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 putting on all these layers of misunderstanding and like tr it's just all drama within the family that's causing all of this and it could be resolved by just you know Eli and David reconnecting or you know Eli being honest with David about what he wants from the or business. Or like Carol's dad, Uncle Phil. He could just right. like Uncle talk Phil. to her too. Yeah, like communication could have solved all these problems. So what ends up happening is, yes, Carol shorts the stock on her, uh, her you know, cousin's business. And no, it's on, a a, it's on the business they're contracted with. Oh, yeah, right. She yes, she shorts a business, but ultimately her goal is to put uh, you know put Eli's business out of business. Yes, uh, yes. And and cover him in so many lawsuits from these exploding dresses um, that he that he goes out of business. But Ron Silver will be protected, and he can make a new business with all the money that they made from this shorting the stock. Right. Right. Uh, you know, because his name isn't on the business because his dad's too selfish to put him on, to put him on it. Uh, but, right. you know. But then, you know, of course, David Sternberg, he's such a loyal son. You know, this is his like Shakespearean flaws that he's a loyal son. So he's like, I'm not going to let this happen. I'm going to go to Pinzola myself and I'm going to stop him from doing this. I didn't want your money, Carol. I don't care about that. I just care about my father. And so he goes, he goes with the gun by himself, which just goes to show how like Raglan is the worst undercover cop ever because the guy oh, truly. he's working with directly like is taking a gun and just going to kill this guy. And he has no idea. He has no clue. But also like Raglan, or not Raglan, uh, Pinzolo's security team is truly the worst. Like this is not the well, they, first they time. Well, they just let him up to, to go to a meeting that, you know, it's like, I guess they just didn't check him for a gun or he was hiding it in his shoe or something. Like you just ruined this man's business. You don't check him for a gun? Like who, <laughs> well, what no, I mob think they are you running? I thought that he was in on it in, on some level because What? Carol I don't had, think so. Because well, Carol had already told him about the plan. And Carol was sleeping with uh, Benzolo. Yes. Uh, because he's damn sexy and he needs contractually a love scene in everything that he stars in. I mean, thank you, thank you, movie gods. We just. I mean, need he probably the has the most sex scenes for the amount of hair he has of any <laughs> New York actor working in the eighties. Um, really, you don't think possibly there are hairier with the exception men in the of 80s? Michael Chiklis? Yeah. <laughs> Who was also in the show in a different in a different <laughs> season? Uh, yeah, there are a lot yeah. of very famous people who who had uh, arcs on this show. Yeah, um, but so yeah, so uh, you know, David comes in and he's like, "All right, tomorrow morning we're going to the bank, and you're gonna you're gonna get some money out, and you're gonna give it to me, and my it's gonna save my dad's business." And he's like, "Okay, okay." <laughs> and then they go to the bank and he he you know distracts he brings him a gun into a bank like a total putz he's yeah. such a fucking uh he is he is really a, a mashugi yeah they're all everyone is very dumb in this entire situation a lot uh, of 
So, you know, Tucci is like, ah, he's got a gun. And so, of course, the the cops in the bank are like, ah, he's got a gun. And then they shoot David and he dies. And it's very sad because um, he and his dad had finally made up and they were going to be friends yeah. and, we and build something together. I actually did kind of like tear up at the funeral thing. It was like, I was kind of moved. The, uh, you know, it's it's all the family together and his mom shows up and like, you know, his mom and dad had been divorced for a really long time and he's like, oh boy, oh boy. And, uh, you know, Carol's supposed to go there too. And, you know, she's she's a wreck because she caused this death uh, indirectly. It's, it's really, it's really rough. It and, is. And that's when we find out because Carol talks to Uncle Phil and like finds out oh yeah, I never wanted the business anyway. So I let you build all this resentment for your 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 cousin over all these years. And I should have just told you, Ugh, it was all a misunderstanding. Wah, wah, wah. Right. <sighs> yeah. So then for the last, uh, uh, well, well, okay. So when, when actually uh, David Sternberg brings the gun into the bank and gets yeah. shot by the security guards, um, that's when uh, when Raglan punches him in the face, <laughs> yeah, like, really hard, and you can see him like bleeding, and his his like face is like, oh, and uh, and so he goes to the hospital and gets his jaw wired shut, and he's got to do the whole rest of the show with his jaw wired shut, and of course, what does the doctor say? He's like, uh, no, no solid foods. You got to be on a liquid diet, and it's he's like, he's got ah! the juicer. <laughs> It's already on a liquid diet. It's perfect. <laughs> right. Except uh, in a different scene, um, <laughs> I think it was it was David, right, who who comes in and when he's got the gun and he smashes the juicer, right? Was yes. it him or was it was it Eli? Uh, I think it, it might be Eli. Well, in any case, somebody comes in and just smashes the juicer to pieces. Uh, while threatening him with a gun. <laughs> yeah, because because very much like father, like son, after, you know, a day of being free and finding out that, uh, you know, Tucci's Pinzolo is planning on fleeing the country, Eli also gets a gun, David's dad, and comes over and just tries to shoot him again also. And then the cops right. have to show up and be like, he's not worth it. Don't right. do it, man. And then in a different scene, Carol goes to him and tries to like get him to confess to uh, to the crimes so yeah. that she can go to the police and uh, and turn herself in and, and you know, go in witness protection. Uh, you know, so, and then she gets killed because- Because he catches her. Right, he catches her, well- he catches her and then he smothers her with a, a pillow because they were, you know, also making love at the same mm -hmm. time. So very much, you know, don't go in one-on-one -on -one to try and screw over the, uh, the the crime boss. You should probably have backup, maybe yeah. a cop or two or three. Just like let anyone know where you're going because after right. he, she gets killed, they're trying desperately to find her because she's kind of their whole case at this point. Right. And so it turns out that oh, she's dead and David tried to leave evidence of a crime that he had witnessed Pinzolo commit back when they were in college where he killed a, a drug dealer. Um, and yeah but there's no know, evidence for it it's just no a evidence. letter from a dead guy saying yeah this guy's a murderer he murdered people he, he got me killed he you know and then later he's gonna murder my cousin and then he's gonna try and murder everybody right but it's it's not really real evidence uh right. so looks like tooch is getting away scot-free but Dun, dun, dun. John Raglan can't let that happen. Not again, not on his watch. And so he confronts him as he's about to get on the plane and go and he pulls a gun on him. And then we got Jonathan Banks coming back and going, don't, don't do, do this. this. You're a good cop. Also, he's a cop. Uh, yeah. <laughs> just thought I should let you know, Stanley Tucci, he's also a cop. So... He wants to kill you because he's a cop. 
<laughs> yeah, and then he's like, and you're then, a cop. That means that the other guy's a cop. So now I'm going to have someone kill both of y'all. <laughs> yeah, like, it seems like, <laughs> you know, in that situation, if I'm a crime boss, yeah, on the one hand, I want to have leverage against these undercover cops who are trying to get me, but you never want to be the guy alone without witnesses with two cops and you have information that could get their friends killed by mob bosses. <laughs> you never want to be in that situation. In fact, maybe, you know, uh, Pinzolo's like uh, fatal flaw, his Shakespearean flaw is that he has too much faith in the legal system. You know, yeah. he's like, look, yeah, I've killed people, but I've done what I'm supposed to do. I disposed of the evidence. I, you know, I contracted people through legal means to do all of these crimes. I'm uh, squeaky clean. I'm squeaky clean. I'm going to leave the country, you know, whatever. I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to do. Uh, so, you know, you can't arrest me, but little does he know that, like, cops can just shoot you and then say they thought you had a gun. Yeah, which is literally the what they do easiest here. easiest thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know uh, if it's then, framed necessarily as a good thing. I think there's a little bit of ambiguity to it. Yeah, it but like, ultimately... Like a necessary evil. Yeah, but we're supposed to, you know, but it, it's these kinds of, it's this sort of rhetorical trick that cop shows often play on their viewers, you know, where it's like, listen, if the cop shot him and made up a reason why, he probably had a good reason why he had to make up some other reason, because he was a bad guy, maybe for not the reason he said, but, you know, all these other things that we just can't prove, but they're true. Right. Well, I'm just saying, like, clearly, like, they're framing it as, like, he only did this, Raglan only shot the guy right. because he was traumatized from this other thing. And because, you know, he blamed the guy for, you know, killing, uh, uh, for killing Carol, who I think he had a crush on or something. Yeah. And, you know, it was, it was this whole twisted, like, psychopathic cop thing. And it's framed as, like, you know, you, you, you're going to go behind, you're going to retire now. You can't keep doing this. Uh, cause right, but then he just retires, job. retires happily to Mexico. And like, that's kind of the end right. of that. So like, you know? that's the thing is like, I don't know to what extent it's framing it as like, this was a thing that we had to do that, that was necessary in order to catch the evil criminal who would have gone on to kill tons of people. Uh, so and other cops. Or was it saying look, cops are dirty. They're, they're, so, they're so dirty and they're completely willing to just shoot a guy, uh, shoot a guy for no reason. They do uh, capture they another- Because suspect him of something. Yeah, they do capture another dirty cop earlier in, uh, earlier in the show's run who True. was mm. tampering with things in the harbor. Uh, <laughs> the harbor tampering cop. <laughs> yep, classic. Oh god! Some other like great like moments in this show was like the moment where they're interrogating Jimmy Coke bottles. Remember him from episode one? And he's like, you know, if I tell you anything, Pinzolo's gonna kill gonna kill me. Oh and, god, yeah. Uh, and you know, if I if I don't tell you anything, he's probably still gonna kill me. Uh, so he's like, all right. So I guess you gotta just tell us anyway then. And so then he just sits on a windowsill and just backflips out and kills himself. Yeah, so but, then it's, but then it's great because uh, the undercover cop is like, yeah, that was me. I took care of him. <laughs> <laughs> so Consola's like, hey, you're legit. All right. I can trust this guy. I also love the fact that the the first episode begins on the first night of Sukkot. The yeah, Jewish what holiday a, Sukkot. What a random ass Jewish holiday. Very well researched. Well, no, I think, I think that's great. I, I, I'm guessing that there was some Jewish writers in the writer's room. I mean, the, a lot, all of the dialogue to me feels very authentic, yeah. if a little overblown, you know? Yeah. It's like the, you know, it's like how when you're watching like Goodfellas or something, like, yeah, the dialogue feels overly Italian, but it's not inaccurately Italian. It's just they've written it so that every single sentence that these people say is completely Italian. And it's the same way for this show, both right. with its Italians and with its uh, Jews. Jews. It's like yeah. every sentence that they say is the most Jewish it could possibly be, but it's not yeah. inauthentically Jewish. No, no. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that's that's Wise Guy. Uh, I would say a great sort of capstone of Tucci's mobster appearances. Would, would you agree? 
I, I definitely the pinnacle so far, but I'm, yeah. I'm willing to be shocked and surprised by future mobsters if there are any. I'm really hoping we're starting to wind down on the, on the mobster <laughs> side well, of things. I, I do believe that we're about to get into, you know, some of uh, Tucci's roles that he's a little more proud of. Yeah. Um, you know, in just a, in just a little bit, we're going to start getting to things like Beethoven, the Pelican Brief, uh, but but we've got a few uh, a few more TV shows in between there, and mm. a couple of uh, you know movies. So lot, lots of interesting stuff stuff that you might not have heard of coming up. Yeah. Um, what uh, do do you got any Tucci news for us this week? It's Tucci news coming at you live from cloudy, snowy New York City. Um, yeah, no, there's not a lot of Tucci news this week. Um, there was the huge Marvel uh, What If TV series announcement um, with tons of people from the Marvel Cinematic Universe returning, uh, including Stanley Tucci as Dr. Abraham Erskine. They're so, bringing him back as the Captain America doctor. That's they're, great. They're bringing him back. So we will we will see the Tooch. Uh, in, in, in the Marvel U- Yeah, in, in the MCU. It will be great. Uh, other than that, he was included in a Vogue roundup of, uh, you know, eight great celebrities who went viral in 2020. Uh, and of course, for his Negroni stunt, which we have already mentioned. <laughs> It's been talked times. about to death at this point. I mean, yeah. it's one of the memes of 2020, so maybe we'll stop referencing it in January. Yeah. But, uh, January, I mean, no more it. Negronis. <laughs> we loved it, but that's not when we started loving Stanley Tucci. No, I mean, it was long That's before. not why we started this show. No, no absolutely not. Because we love so if- him as a performer. <laughs> that's absolutely true. Uh, is there a, a Tucci fun fact? I have one, David, that, I that know, I'd like to share. Uh, All right, so Tucci uh, is actually, or was, excuse me, was the co-owner of a restaurant, David, in Croton Falls, New York, the Finch Tavern. Uh, Right, which sadly no longer exists. No. Uh, He no longer owns it. He's no longer part owner. Uh, And it's not even still called the Finch. No. It's a sad state of affairs. But he once tried his hand at the restaurateur business. (laughs) Um, And I'm sure that he contributed a lot to what went on that menu. You know, I can only imagine. I'm so sure. Maybe something from his two cookbooks. Exactly. He's a man with two cookbooks. Of course he owned a restaurant. Yeah, exactly. Um, You know, there's there's continues to be buzz about his performance in Supernova uh, for the upcoming award season. So we shall continue to keep you updated on I've any absolutely all. been tuning in with with and waiting with bated breath yeah. at that nomination uh you know stream or whatever right. it is right <laughs> um yeah well thank you so much for joining us for another standing stanley tucci uh you can find us to <laughs> you can find us and more episodes uh at talking tropes on twitter or wherever podcasts are found. Uh, You can also find us on YouTube. Um, Please like, comment, subscribe wherever you see us. We we really appreciate any kind of feedback we hear from you. Uh, It means a lot. And if you yourself are a Tucci stan and have a particular piece of Tucci media that you would love to gush about with the world, please get in contact with us because we'd love to have you on. Yeah, if you didn't notice this one, you know, we're not going perfectly in order. We're trying to stick as much to chronological as possible, but we're willing to jump around for, you yeah. know, for a, for a guest star like you, because you're special. Like you, yeah. You are, who's <laughs> listening to this right now. Um, all right. Stay Stanley, two cheds. Stay Stanley, bye. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>